Hey everyone, my name is Tyler Purrier and welcome to the first state of development coverage on World Creator 3. The third version of World Creator is currently in its alpha phase of development and the goal here is to provide you as much coverage of the development of the software to its full release and beyond. This current segment was recorded in a single open discussion style session with the developer of the program, but it will be then split up into multiple parts by topic to make it easier for you to find the area you're interested in. So with that, let's jump right into the first devlog. So joining me today will be Stefan, who is not only one of the developers for War Creator 3, but the founder as well. Stefan, thank you for joining me in the first breakdown video here. How are you today? Oh, thank you for inviting me. Um, yeah, I feel, I feel very fine today. Thank you. So as you can see, the UI is going to be a little bit different in World Creator 3. It's pretty similar, but there are some subtle changes. And we'll touch on that in just a little bit. But I do want to stress that the we're still working on the World Creator 2 video series. And even though World Creator 3, as amazing as it is, is just around the corner, all the World Creator 2 content in that last series will still be relevant in this new program. The things like the filters, how you decide to design the terrain, um, which choices you make on which filters to choose, how to texture, all of that is still for the most part going to be the same. Granted, there are gonna be some subtleties in how you organized all of those filters and textures and, and way you distribute those onto the terrain. But it will be good to note that all that previous content will still be relevant on future courses in World Creator 3. Stefan, would you say that that is an accurate statement or would you uh, want to elaborate any more on any major changes in World Creator 3 that are vastly different from World Creator 2? Well, one of the yeah, major new features is actually the biome system. One of the most important parts, actually, because this will enable you to create real worlds and real entire worlds, not just, you know, different smaller parts or something like that. But it will give you a really good mix of different yeah, setups. And those setups could be anything like different textures, different trees, different filters, different trees co combined with different textures. So it's actually like you really can create uh, biomes that are directly connected with each other and blended uh, into each other. And those biomes could be could be just saved away. You can create biome presets. You can share and sell those biomes and just load it into your existing projects. And, you know, you could, I mean, the biomes are really, really huge. It's really, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's currently quite hard to, to explain, but um, <laughs> what it means working with biomes, they will make everything a lot more easy. And uh, yeah, will save you a lot of time, really a lot of time. Oh, yeah, definitely. And you could say the biome system, which I went ahead and showcased here a little bit on the right, is the more advanced version of the um, areas system on World Creator 2 that we all kind of wanted. I'm sure everyone would want to, in World Creator 2, we show how to create different biomes in that series, and it requires you to use an area. But in this case, all of that is done up front for you, in a sense, with biome-specific you know, features. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. The areas, honestly, um, I like the areas in World Creator 2, but we use them to do multiple multiple actions with them, like, you know, importing the height maps, using them to, uh, um, to draw, and also importing blend maps for mm -hmm. texturing mm -hmm. and other, and, 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 and yeah, more stuff like that. But um, if you want to do real fancy stuff, um, it was always very, very tricky to combine them. Right, and it was not a good workflow in my opinion. It was good at that time, but yeah, you know, um, work creator has to evolve, and we thought about a way better solution. So the biomes are definitely not just one step in advance. It's about I don't know three, four, five steps ahead of the areas. Yeah, it's just like a huge jump, a huge, uh, just the next level. Yeah, and we show you how to do you know the best workflow that we found in World Creator Two to achieve all that. But in World Creator Three, as Stefan said, it's going to be a much easier process, and we'll definitely dive yeah. into that later more when the uh, whole software as a whole is more polished with more features. Because there's a whole lot more that uh, I know he and I, as well as the whole Alpha team, love to just keep adding new features and and little nit bits to um, provide uh, for the end user. All right, so we're going to touch back on the UI just a little bit. I'm gonna go back to this terrain tab. So over here on the left, we have the main menu bar, kind of very similar to how we had it before, but it's your typical you know, new project, 
open folder, save, save as, screenshot. And here's a nice little button that allows you to go straight to the folder automatically for your screenshots, which I've found is, it's a small little icon, but I found it very handy in this uh, particular application. And also the UI to the right resembles pretty similarly to how World Creator 2 is, except I find it a, a whole lot more clean really simple to utilize. Of course, there's a whole lot more to add to this, but what sort of customization options like in World Creator 2 can we see in World Creator 3, you know, from any, be able to adjust the size, change the text, colors, is that all sort of still going to be the case? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, this um, terrain tab that you see here, I mean, currently it's empty, but um, there will be a lot more fancy stuff. I mean, also we will add um, all the things that we had in World Creator 2, of course, and especially because we have this tab open, um, this tab will also include the, uh, the custom base shape, which will be also taken to your next level. And uh, here you will be also able to, to import your height maps and also to sculpt the initial terrain. So this is all, this will be all included here. Gotcha, right here on this main terrain tab. Yeah, I mean, this, this, this tab is now um, the one that you will use to, to design the terrain shape itself entirely, okay? So it's not, not, not like World Creator 2, where you could do that in the terrain tab or use the areas. So we just put everything down here into, the, in, in, into this tab. So it's at one, one, one location. Mm -hmm. Right. And as you can see here in the terrain tab, there's a whole lot of space here to fill out, as Stefan mentioned. But yeah. you can see some of these features that you would are pretty used to. The seed value can change to whatever you want. Uh, the precision level can can be changed to anything that you want as well, as well as the uh, fractal noise um, settings here. So you can adjust these however you see fit um, that are really similar to what you're used to in World Creator 2. And as you noticed... Um, when I was either moving around in the viewport here or changing the, um, the seed value here. Let's actually go ahead and set that back to zero. So you can see when I did that, that the UI it looks a little bit more sharp. And one of the most striking features of Real Creator 3 as opposed to the previous version is that the entire lighting system is using um, path tracing, which is a subset of ray tracing. So you can use those ray tracing cores in your RTX cards to really leverage the lighting in this scene. And I know that not everybody has an NVIDIA GeForce RTX. So as far as GPU support or even further down the line, what sort of um, plans are there for AMD or say if they didn't want to use ray tracing or didn't have an RTX card, they still had to utilize, you know, their original um, non-RTX card or CPU power. Will those type of features still be implemented in World Creator 3 or is the highlighted feature really just trying to push for, for path tracing? Well, I mean, the current Technic is not using RTX technology at all. So this is entirely just, just done on the GPU using compute shaders, um, which means as long as your GPU supports compute shaders, and I think that was with DirectX 11, um, then there's no problem. It will run and it will look just like as you see it on here. Um, we're going to implement the RTX technology on top. So for those who will have an RTX card, um, yeah, they will be able to, to use the RTX technology and then we can, yeah, enable pure ray tracing mm -hmm. with a lot of ray bounces, you know, and this will result in a even yeah, yeah, better quality. But actually, to be honest, I like the quality that currently is available and it runs everywhere. So we need to see if it really makes sense to include that or not. So it depends. For now, um, this is what we have here and this is what we will have until until the beta. And um, yeah, I think we'll start the RTX hack include maybe early 21. Well, that's even better than this sort of uh, really good lighting quality is indeed open to more users then and not just specific RTX. And that's great to hear because this runs just so buttery smooth, even on uh, the graphics card that I have. So it's really fantastic to see um, this uh, increase in quality on something that's not even using the full RTX course yet. So yeah, great job there. 